Hello everyone, welcome back to my RFB series and this time I have a bonus episode for you all. Recently over this weekend or last weekend I was uh, wonder I had an idea for a redstone circuit for a uh, capacitor where you could charge up its the length of its uh, redstone signal and adjust it or and decrease at the same time. And uh, through a lot of uh, messing around I have completely made a brand new redstone circuit and it's basically an adjustable capacitor. So I'm just going to show you guys what it does. Right, right now in front of you is an RS NOR latch array. It's basically a bunch of uh, vertical RS NOR latches combined across it next to each other with an AND gate on each one. So every time you press the uh, the button that uh, right there on your left, it'll send a signal to this one which will activate that pulse, which will turn off this lock on the AND gate. And when um, this pulse limiter goes off, it will turn off, or that torch on the top will turn on, turn on the next uh, RS NOR latch and then send the uh, unlock the next gate. So now let me just show you here. Press this button. Torch goes on there just for a little signal meaning that it's on and the next one and then the next one. Now if we go up here I have two th uh, array of AND gates on top. Notice that the three are off there when the three are down here are on. So when I hit it again now four of them are off which means I have a set for a four delay or rather a full a four sustained circuit because I have a monstable circuit up top here which is why it sustains the pulse. Um, this is where basically the entry key goes and across there you can see there's this, uh, sub the subtractor line beneath it where you want to decrease the pulse when I hit the button right here. Let's press this. Now you can see we're back down to three. So those three are off and the three down here are on. So let's go back up. Now when I hit this enter key It'll turn off this end game. It'll turn on this, which will send a signal into the monstable circuit. Now, the way this works is that it sustains the pulse, and the higher up we go back, it goes the longer the signal gets sent down. Now, technically, you could just make a monstable circuit, but this isn't a true capacitor because that just gets one input and it goes in there. This, however, acts in the sense that the power builds up when you press the button. So now, I'll hit this enter key here in the piston. As you can see, it gets held out there for a little bit longer than an average button hit would. Now, let's time this time. Let, let's just go up to six for the maximum delay. And you got to hit it after the repeater on the right goes off. You can't do it any quicker, otherwise, it just won't work. Now, I hit this button right here. We get a nice long sustained pulse there. Now I want to give credit to CMB Minecraft for my design because I did use this RS Norlatch array right here for everything. However, the Monstable circuit, the AND gates, and everything else is all me, 100%. I just use his um, basic RS Norlatch, this little small section here, to, to uh, start my basis point off from. So I give credit to CMB for this, so I thank him. And um, this is, um, right now I'm just going to show you how you can extend it. This can easily be extended by just simply adding it to the next one. This stunt one has to be longer than the other. It basically goes up by a 3 and 2 and 3 and 2 and so on. Now, we want to do here is put this is where you start off the uh, AND gate with this torch here. You put two repeaters because you do not want the redstone dust down here going into the other redstone dust, which would screw up the circuit. You put this here to give it a little pulse and then just connect uh, this and that to this. Now, I'm running out of um, length here, so what you could do is add a repeater. It wouldn't make a any significant difference because the pulse still gets sent through to the circuit so it, you, it can still be extended it's just that as you gradually increase you'll have a bit of a delay now what you want to do here is cover this up and add another subtractor line to it so you can get a better output subtractor is really not necessary but it fits easily right underneath my AND gates so that it's kind of a it's you know it's recommended but it's still optional now this you don't leave here you leave here because you the putting a repeater will not do you anything. It just doesn't do nothing. That's just the spot in case you want to keep adding on. Now what you do is you just put an AND gate right into here. And let me just adjust my reach because I think I screwed this up uh, my last episode. I typed, uh, changed it up and it went a little buggy. But now you put an AND gate here to wire and this. There you go. Now this is one use, like I said in my last video with AND gates. They're used as locks and I'm going to show you that in a minute. I forgot to mention to you guys how use what the uses for these different uh, basic logic gates were so I'll do that in a minute for now what we do is you add uh, a torch right here that just shows you that the pulse is off 
connect this to a repeater, wire that up, put a torch down, and then I put another repeater. Okay, and that's it. That's all you really have to do. And that just increases the delay. Now, what you want to do is press the button, build it up, and up. We're going to go to 7 this time just to show you this is a big, a little bit more of a delay. Alright, 7. Now hit enter. You got a really long delay right there. Okay. Now, you can also, if you want, you can have this, uh, just uninvert this, and you can have it, the door be open all the time. Now, one thing I also want to point out is you have to have, press the, uh, add button once, or power build up button once, whatever you want to call it. This way, it will at least be able to do it once. Otherwise, hitting enter will do nothing. However, that's basically just a normal redstone button pulse, but... Anyway, I also figured out by using the redstone torches on this side and getting rid of the impossible circuit and the AND gates on the left, you can do a kind of um, puzzle mechanism here where it locks. This is an XOR gate. This is probably one of the smallest ones you can make because pistons make it much more convenient. And when I hit enter there, you see that piston pops down and goes back in because that redstone, when you reach to a certain point, opens up that piston, which uh, s turns off that one section of the AND gate. And that you can also. You can also have the pulse get wired to reset the circuit every time. However, I just have this button here for purposes to hit that. And if you do go past it, you see that uh, it, the uh, repeater went down here. So if I go past the circuit, it'll turn off the pulse here. So then that'll, even if that piss is extended, that end gate will turn off. Which makes it so that you have to have a set number of times you hit it. Now, back to what I said before, I forgot to mention this to you guys. I really should have been in more depth with the uh, gates now. For OR gates, this is basically if you want to have a set amount of pulses. Like, you just want to have multiple inputs. However, you have to turn them all off if you want something to go off, unless it's inverted to a NOR gate. In this case, you have to have them both off whenever to be on. Okay? AND gates are used for locks. You, they're, you commonly use if you want to have um, two sections be turned off or on, depending if it's an AND or NAND gate. So this way you can adjust the pulse from that. And, uh, I mean, the other than the... Uh, not gates there is really not much ring except you want to invert and that's basically much it guys alright thank you all and I'll see you next time